All right. So I think I've given everyone enough time to join today. So we'll go ahead and get started now. Um, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar to discuss how to solve for excess apparel during and post COVID-19. My name is Claire Mitchell and I'm a strategic account manager at BSTOC and will be serving as moderator for today's discussion. As we get into the webinar, please feel free to use the portal on your screen to send in questions through the Q&A tab on your toolbar. We'll plan to do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Today's webinar will be hosted by Giorgio Vitali, head of EMEA Business Development for BSTOC Solutions, alongside BSTOC's Marketplace Manager, Jess Morris. They'll be leading a conversation on how to utilize BSTOC to solve for your excess apparel inventory. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it off to you, Giorgio. That's great. Thanks, Claire. And uh, thanks, everyone, for, for dialing in. I'm going to um, discuss uh, a number of points today, and we're going to start off with the um, current landscape. So we know this has been a challenging time for many, you know, many apparel companies and, and retailers. You know, there's significant uncertainty in their primary resale and you know, sale channels. Um, this in turn, you know, is is effectively unprecedented times for many of these, you know, with many of these stores now closed. However, what we are experiencing now is that stores are beginning to reopen across Europe. So you know, with this in mind, and when we think of the this period of time, we know, you know liquidity and space remains an issue with large volumes of spring summer products going to be available within the market. With this in mind, we're already experiencing large volumes of inventories entering the secondary market. Retailers have little choice but to apply significant reductions in their sale prices. And you know, again, we're, we're closely aligned to the secondary market, and we've seen disruption in the space. You know, the the, the traditional off price plus discounters, who would normally you know resell or liquidate this type of inventory. Um, they won't have capacity or the necessary funds to handle these large volumes of inventory. This is, both, you know, this is creating both an economic and sustainability pressure for many of our clients and new clients joining our, our ecosystem. Um, there's definitely going to be, you know, disruption. So who are we? You know, who are be stock solutions? Um, for those of you who are new to be stock, you know, we are the world's largest business-to-business -business auction platform connecting multiple sellers with multiple buyers. If you look towards the left-hand side of this, this, this graphic, you can see some example of the sellers that we work with across Europe. You know, we work with Amazon, with Otto and My Toys Group, and Brown, Groupon, many, many apparel resellers. Um, so what we do, what we do is we, we drive inventory from these, these organizations. And as you look towards the right hand side of the chart, you'll see we have this network of buyers. So over you know, a period of 16 years, you know, we've built out a global buyer base of over 500,000 approved buyers. We operate across 134 countries. You know, and, and from an inventory perspective, there's over a billion euros of inventory that's available. What we what we achieve and how we do this, if you look at the bottom, is we convert this excess inventory into cash for our clients. So the importance of turning excess inventory into cash is something we're going to expand on a bit more. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Jess, who's going to discuss this in more detail. Thanks, George. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jess Morris. I'm Marketplace Manager. Um, and part of my role is to manage the supply and demand within marketplaces. And here we can see um, sort of the key KPIs that I follow day to day um, to ensure that our sellers' accounts are getting the best recovery rates as possible. So what we're delving into here is the GMV and recovery rate specifically for apparel within the B-Stock marketplaces. And what we can clearly see on the right hand side as we enter May is a strong recovery for our both the volume flowing through the site, which is the blue bars, and the actual recovery rate against the original retail value, which is the dark blue line at the top. And what we're seeing is an increase in volume of 200% improvement, which is fantastic news for the marketplace, 
and a recovery of a 70% increase, which means that buyers really are keen to get their hands on this stock. One of the things we've definitely noticed is we're starting to balance out apparel versus the essential categories. So previously, where you can see the dip through March and April, other categories were driving more sales through our site. So we we're seeing more essential categories such as grocery, appliances, electronics, home improvement, home DIY, home and living, all were flowing very well, whereas apparel was not as popular. What we're now seeing is a recovery within the secondary marketplace and a real demand from our buyers to get their hands on this stock. What they really want to do is they want to sell it out to the consumers now, to wear now, before the spring summer season is over. So when we talk to our retailers, we talk a bit about what challenges that they might face when entering a B2B marketplace. And the three sort of key areas that I tend to come across whenever talking to potential sellers is this brand dilution piece, velocity, and reduction of buyers. So brand dilution is really important, both for B-Stock and for our sellers. We're keen to ensure that your brand is protected, but yet you're still managing to achieve that velocity piece. And that velocity piece is around getting stock out of warehouses and moving so that you're gaining cash for that stock rather than it growing as debt almost sat in warehouses. And then another current challenge that when we talk to our sellers is a reduction of buyers. So challenges throughout the virus have been uh, buyers logistics challenges and also access to capital. That's what we've seen means that there have been a reduction of those buyers. However, what we're now starting to see is an increase in buyers as those with side hustles or other businesses trying to branch out and increase their capital are turning to the secondary market in order to try and buy stock. So if I hand back to George, how we can cover how B2B Marketplace has solved for some of these challenges. Oh, thanks, Jess. And that's a great point you raised there. You know, we, we, you know, the upward trend, particularly in the apparel category, is great to see. You know, however, you know, as you said, you know, we know there are current challenges. So when we talk to you know, our clients or we talk to new clients, there are some significant points that we address. And as we go through today's webinar, we're going to touch on some of these points today. So as I mentioned, you know, brand control is paramount. Brand equity is invaluable and it must be protected. However, when we consider pricing, you know, lower pricing is an expectation. And that's something we work with the sellers to understand that they are going to experience low velocity based on this inventory in their supply chain. So how do we address these challenges? Well, one way to address this is by selling excess inventory to a diverse buyer base via a private online B2B auction marketplace. So how do we use, you know, how do we use brand control? You know, brand control is, is prevalent in all new, you know, all new conversations with apparel companies. Channel control is also key. So what I'm going to talk about a bit more now, um, you know, and Jess will explore how we do this through higher pricing and velocity. You know, I'm going to discuss both brand control and the associated auction strategies that underpin this, how we create by demand and our use of data analysis to create these go to market strategies. Once we review this, Jess will discuss the importance of sustainability before we recap today's webinar. So, you know, brand control, you know, we understand how important it is and we know clients do not want to dilute their brand through too many channels, which can jeopardize positive brand equity, which has taken both significant time and resource to build up. You know, so when we consider channel control, especially for sensitive, you know, premium luxury apparel resellers, there are a number of ways to avoid channel conflict. And that is by setting up specific buyer restrictions on your marketplace. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see some information from the terms of purchase of one of our European clients. What we can do is we can create restrictions within these terms of purchase. These, in, these restrictions can include, you know, mandating the delabeling of all items prior to resale. 
we can we can exclude resale on third party sites. Establishing geographic limitations is also becoming more and more important when we consider the UK and Europe. We have clients already that need to ensure inventory does not cannibalize their primary selling channels. So we can do this by selling inventory to exporters only. But fundamentally, by creating these remarketing rules and guidelines, we can ensure these brand control measures not only support and mitigate risk for the sellers, but we want to ensure this creates high recoveries over time. So I'm going to hand it back over to Jess. Yeah, and we're going to discuss a bit more on how we achieve higher pricing. So higher pricing is a really interesting part of the auction marketplace. And one of the benefits of using B-Stock is you're tapping into an existing buyer base. This buyer base is drawn by low start prices. And this is usually quite a difficult conversation to have initially when talking with potential clients around starting large truckloads of stock with a low start price. So here, if I draw your attention to the right hand side, the graph, what we can see is the price point and the current bids for each for a truckload of items. And what we're seeing is, a, despite the start price of 100 euros, by the end of the auction on the far right, we have a finishing price of 12,600 euros with a total of 45 bids from 12 unique bidders. And this is a fantastic result for, for this stock from one of our private sellers. What you can also see is an increase in the number of bids towards the end as we move across the timeline. This is caused by what we, what we use uh, called popcorn bidding. And this is where we mimic a real life auction house. And it's where the clock resets every time a new buyer bids, which gives each buyer a chance to put their best and final offer in, driving the best final highest price for our sellers. And this is a really, really powerful tool and one of the best ways that we can achieve that higher pricing. But to balance higher pricing, we also need to ensure that we can achieve velocity. So if we have a look at the next slide, velocity is another really important part of the seller's marketplace. We need to ensure that inventory is coming through, that the stock is there available for our buyers, and that our marketplace can also handle the, an increase in any volume that sellers need to clear stock. What we're expecting after COVID is a, a mass increase in the amount of stock coming through our marketplaces. And we're confident that our buyer base, our existing buyer base and our growing buyer base will be able to with, with, withhold this amount of velocity while still achieving that higher buyer base. And this is done by selling to those thousands of interested business buyers that still have the restrictions to ensure the brand control, but still enabling that you can sell this stock. So what strategies can B stock execute to help retailers achieve? And George will talk through this. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, and that's a that's a great question. You know, so our you know, ultimately our goal is to build a strategic asset for our clients that ensures the highest willingness to pay for your inventory. We effectively build a demand base to maximize marketplace activity. Now, some of our proven, you know, and best, best practices include adhering to a consistent listing schedule. So what that means when we build a marketplace, we ensure there's inventory live on a regular cadence to ensure buyer interest is maintained. And as Jess has illustrated on the previous slide, we endorse low bid starting strategies. The low bid starting strategies reduce the barrier to entry. This creates a higher pool of engagement from these approved buyers, but ultimately, and what we've proven over time, is it increases recovery month on month, year on year for our clients. So, you know, Ensuring we have the correct information for the buyers, manifested lots, more details for the buyers versus unmanifested inventory. There's a correlation between the data we can share and the data we're unable to share and the bidding activity that underpins it. So we use, you know, we utilize effective merchandising strategies, we'll align key brands or brand names within the listings, 
will support key, you know, key categories aligned to seasonality. But fundamentally, you know, we are we are creating you know, strategic auction out you know, layouts to highlight these compelling assortments. So you know, we do this to what we what we do. You know, we would never flood the marketplace with too much inventory. You know, supply must be met with sufficient demand, and this is something we've spent the last decade, you know, building out. So on this particular side, you know, demand for product from secondary market buyer exists constantly, and this is something we've learned. And we work very closely with the buyers to establish what their processes are, how their market resale strategies work. And these resellers can include exporters, marketplace sellers by eBay and Amazon. A number of them are discount store owners. And we have smaller resale shop owners, in addition to new and emerging e-commerce resellers. They all contribute to an exploding ecosystem known as the secondary market. And B Stock Solutions has been at the forefront of this growth during the last 16 years. What you can see on the right hand side of the first chart is the number of bidders over time during the last four years. So from 2016 to 2019, you can see the year on year growth of bidders in, in, this, in the apparel category. Underneath this, you'll see what correlates in the number of transactions, the year on year growth, you know, exceeding 266% growth. And what this what this shows us is B stock strength of the ecosystem and that network effect. This is illustrated really well here. Um, right, so the you know the second chart, as I mentioned, you know, what we're seeing is that more and more apparel resellers and retailers are moving into this. The significant growth in the category, you know, aligns aligns to what we see and we know we know e-commerce e-commerce is underpinned by this growth. You know, so you know, let's let's consider this a bit more. You know, how do we how do we inform and create these strategies to ensure buyer demand is meeting the ever growing supply that we're putting through our ecosystem? And data analysis is key. You know, we are we are all we are all into data. You know, and the data instructs our, instructs and builds out our strategy. So we use reporting. We use data analysis to validate the correct auction strategies to improve recovery over time. So we're using, you know, we're going to quantitatively measure, measure recoveries, measure behaviors of the buyers. Once we have that, we'll look at the qualitative analysis as well to see what the engagement is, what the feedback is from the buyers. Once we have this information together, we're able to implement and test. And once we begin to test and we deliver, we begin to measure. So we have these measurable data points, these KPIs, and we can pivot strategies based on this data. You know, we survey, as I mentioned, we survey and we talk to the buyers to gain the feedback. And once we reach a conclusion, we endorse continuous improvement. We expect change. And if we consider particularly the short and medium term impact on, from COVID, you know, and, and in the, the graphs that Jess and myself have shared so far, we're continuously monitoring the marketplace so we can provide timely feedback. So, you know, this, this, this leads me to think, you know, and again, we're going to discuss this in more detail, you know, that the, the primary objective for many, many retailers and apparel sellers has been to engage in and reaffirm velocity. But what we will see beyond this is um, you know, the, the importance of corporate social responsibility and sustainability. So this is something Jess is now going to talk a bit more about. And we really are seeing a focus in sustainability when we talk about when George has talked about that continuous improvement and involving this includes our sustainability and each company's responsibility to ensure that the environment is as, as, as minimal impact from the result of our um, economy. And this is a really interesting part as we see um, as we come out this other side of COVID we've seen in the news the um, Canals in Venice are clearing up, we're seeing less greenhouse gases and reduced number of cars on the road. And I think it will, it will increase more awareness within the consumer market that they will only shop with retailers and companies and apparel providers especially 
that are conscientious and are providing a sustainable market. And one of the benefits of using uh, B stock and the B2B marketplace is it is giving a second life to stock. So rather than uh, apparel arriving in landfills or being burnt or destroyed, instead we're able to sell it on and ensure that the creation of that apparel in the first place isn't wasted. This way we can help the planet one item at a time. And we're starting to see this appear in legislation as well. So we'll see um, a new French law come into place that no stock can be burnt or put into landfill. And it's highly expected to start to see other European countries and the European Union start to adopt these types of laws as well as we move to become more conscientious. So we've thrown a lot of data points at you and a lot of key points as to how the secondary market can really help the apparel industry. So George will just sort of summarise a few takeaways. Thanks, Jess. You know, we, you know, we've shared quite a bit of information, you know, today. Um, and, you know, you know, what are the lessons that we've learned? And, you know, one of the key points we, we know, and this is from having conversations during, during COVID-19, is that cash is king. You know, the importance of liquidity for apparel and, and retailers is, 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 is so important. Um, and being able to access a diverse buyer base for returned and excess stock is becoming more and more important. You know, we know, you know, companies that have been suffering will turn to stock clearance, stroke, you know, liquidation more frequently going forwards as a means to keep inventory levels lean and turn this excess inventory into cash more, more frequently. But, you know, as we know, what, what, we're, what we're seeing now and is that there's going to be an explosion within the secondary market and this in turn will create a new generation of resellers which we anticipate will join the ecosystem that B stock solutions has built over time um, we experienced the same the same pattern in the last financial crash of 2008 and although these circumstances are different we expect the same trends as we move beyond this um, we know that online marketplace solutions allow for higher pricing, you know, velocity and brand control. And when we consider these key, these key points, you know, our portfolio of services address the needs of apparel and retailers to move this excess inventory. This, 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 this solution, you know, this ecosystem, this private marketplace solution actually becomes a strategic asset for both our current clients and for our new clients that join this that join this network um so you know, this, this has been a great discussion and i'll hand it back to claire for any 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 questions great thanks Giorgio and jess that was great thank you both for sharing with us today um all right everyone now we'll proceed to the q a portion of our webinar uh, again please send in questions through the q a tab on your toolbar uh, looks like we have a couple questions already come through um, this first question is for you, Jess. Um, how do I control who I sell to? And this is a really, really important question and a key concern quite a few of our retailers had. Um, we ensure that all our buyers are registered businesses, um, either with a VAT number or their country's valid company house um, CRN number. And we've, we uh, ensure that they are valid and that they're able to buy. We also make sure that should there be any issues around non-paying bidders, which is unfortunately um, every auction marketplace's challenge, um, that these buyers are promptly um, blocked and ensure that, that we keep the marketplace fluid and buyers continuing to bid. If you have any additional restrictions on each of your buyer bases or would like a closed marketplace, that's always a possibility and we'll ensure that the marketplace that we launch for you has the buyers that you expect that are registered and legal bidders. Great, thank you, Jess. Um, this next question is for the both of you. Um, how quickly can I turn inventory into cash? And then the second part of this question is, what can I expect when launching in terms of time, process, et cetera? So, Giorgio, I'll have you take this one first. Jess, feel free to tag on afterward. Sure. No, I mean, the, yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. And, um, and there, are, there are a number of solutions available. You know, we, have, we have a shared marketplace solution for companies that have a very quick requirement to liquidate inventory. 
um, that solution that solution ensures you can access you know a, a shared marketplace and, and access multiple buyers immediately however our private marketplace solution when we build both branded or pseudo brand marketplaces the traditional timeline for for build and implementation will fluctuate between three to four weeks however when we take every case on an individual basis you know this is definitely a white glove service that we provide our clients so we factor out all requirements based on supply chain and the the the, the duration the the, the 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 need to liquidate the inventory as quickly as possible we will map all of those considerations and effectively roadmap out the correct strategy to get your marketplace to market as quickly as possible and just to expand on that um, from George, uh, there is that many to many marketplace which can be set up within the day, should there be a very, you know, urgent need to liquidate and move stock out quickly. So that's always an additional model. Great, that's awesome. Um, all right, next up, this question will be for you, Jess. Uh, so what if I don't have a manifest? So this isn't a problem at all. This is purely down to your auction strategy. Um, it's a sort of cost benefit analysis almost that we can we can walk through together if you're interested in, in selling an unmanifested lot. And we can decide whether it's it's worth the effort to manifest each item, work out the condition, the functionality, or whether it is worth just loading auctions that are unmanifested. What we do need to bear in mind is that any un unmanifested lots will have a dip in recovery because it's a risk for the buyers. They don't know what it is that they're getting. So it is worth it if we have high value or luxury items, it is always worth manifesting and ensuring that we're confident in the condition of the stock. But if it, if that, you know, we're looking at truckloads or high volumes of stock or potentially low value stock that just needs to move quickly, unmanifested isn't a problem at all. We just need to be aware of the impact of recovery that might have. Great. Thank you, Jess. Um, next up, looks like we only have time for about maybe two more questions. So, Giorgio, I'll let you take this one. Um, if I have my own buyers, can I move them to the B-Stock platform? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, so, when we, when we work with new clients and we launch a new marketplace, one of the things we'll do is we'll strongly endorse our clients to invite those, those buyers they may have previously been working with. Now, considering they meet all of the, um, you know, resale restrictions and, and buyer approval steps that we build out for our sellers, bringing in those buyers creates um, competition from the offset. So the traditional ways of managing that, all of a sudden you are, you're leveraging that current buyer base you're working with against tens of thousands of buyers across Europe. So you know, in short, the answer is yes, we strongly endorse it. But again, those buyers must meet the requirements that we will build out with the new sellers within their private marketplace. So yeah, it's good practice to do that. And what you do find over time is that you'll find out their real willingness to pay. And as we achieve high recoveries, those buyers traditionally that you worked with, they tend to fade away as the, as the values and recoveries increase. So yeah, it's something we we strongly endorse and recommend from the offset. Yeah, that's great, thanks. Um, and then next, last up, uh, we have a question for Jess. Um, so everything is pointing to leveling out, um, but will buyers be ready to buy inventory? And this is definitely a common concern uh, in general anyway, but given the current situation, um, we're seeing an actual increase in the number of buyers, as I sort of mentioned before, um, those companies turning to side hustles, those that might have been made redundant or on furlough are turning to other ways to make money. And what we're seeing is a, actually a boom in the number of buyers within the secondary market. And what we'll also start to see is as the economy sort of um, begins to shrink slightly as, as, as caused by the virus and the pandemic, we will see consumers look to purchase um, items that are, are better value and therefore they'll turn to the secondary market for that overstock and customer returns. So what we'll see is actually a really nice flow of stock through the secondary market to an increased buyer base to the demand within the consumer market driven by the current economy. Great. 
Um, and Giorgio, do you want to add anything onto this as well? Yeah, I, I just add, I mean, we, we mentioned this earlier within the webinar, you know, back, back in 2008, you know, the, we, we experienced the same pattern and, and Jess is correct. And I've mentioned this, you know, we, we are expecting a new generation of, of resellers and buyers, you know, there, there are the companies are going through significant change. There are, there are resources that may no longer be a priority and that results in restructuring and, and, and effectively, you know, people are losing, you know, losing their jobs and, and they will look to alternative ways of supplementing their income. So the, the B stock ecosystem of both sellers and buyers really supports people in these circumstances. So, you know, as, as, as we anticipate, we will see a flurry, of new companies registered we would we expect and we are seeing now new buyers register not only for our you know our current marketplaces but even on the wait lists for the new marketplaces we're launching as we work through this this you know end of may to june and july great thank you both um all right so that's going to wrap things up for us today everyone um thank you very much for joining uh, we'll be sending out a copy of the presentation tomorrow and please don't hesitate to reach out in the meantime if you need anything and with that stay well everyone have a great day